Mrs. Ross, the Glenwood School Counselor. It's Friday, May 1st. Can you believe it? It's May. So all this week, we have been talking about the word patience. And we've shared different things. I've talked to you about uh, activities you could try. So we're going to do a review today, and then we'll do our mindful moment. So um, before we do it, We'll do our review, and then we'll do our mindful moment, and then I have a story for you. So, I would gather that this week, just talking about patience, that you realize it is really hard. It's hard sometimes to show patience, and for young children, um, it is really difficult. Uh, especially when you're going, but I've listened to that story, or I have something so important to say, um, and uh, that's when... I bet if you think, if you close your eyes and think, you can think of kids in your classroom who would interrupt story time or who just but would go, would blurt out and go, but, 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 but I really need to say this. Um, or, or maybe you did that when your teacher was talking or your mom's talking or your dad's talking on the phone. You're going, but it was important. It was important. Um, so one of the things that I've always shared with boys and girls that, again, we read a story about uh, pushing your words outside and then bringing them back in when it was appropriate for you to talk. You could also do this technique that I've used with some of my blurters, okay? So you take your tongue and you put it to the roof of your mouth. Ah. It's really hard to talk when your tongue is at the roof of your mouth. So you could do that and breathe and go, okay, I gotta wait my turn, I gotta wait my turn. Um, and, you know, again, patience is one of those life skills that we have to work on. So I'm gonna tell you a fun activity that you can do today. So you can take a bottle of bubbles. If you don't have a bottle of bubbles at your house, uh, get your parents to help you figure out there is a way that you can make homemade bubbles with dish detergent uh, that's really simple. And this is what I want you to do. Now, this is going to practice patience. So when you, and I'm not doing this inside my house because I don't want to get my office area sticky. But you can blow uh, the bubbles. And instead of like, guess what we always want to do with the bubbles? We want to go Boo! like this, don't we? We want to smack them. You can't do that. If we're going to practice patience, I want you to try to catch the bubbles without them popping. Oh, my goodness. Now, if we had to do that, are we going to be fast and furious and rough? Mm -mm. We have to be slow and calm because we don't want the bubble to pop. So I want you to try that. See if you can catch bubbles and count how many bubbles you caught without them popping. And I want to know so you can respond on our Facebook Live. Hey, I was able to catch this many bubbles without them popping. And I'm going to tell you, this is very difficult. Miss Ross has tried this. You can do it, but it takes lots of practice. But it'd be a fun thing to do. So I hope you will try that today. So practicing patience. All right, so we're going to get ready for story time. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do our mindful breathing. All right, are you ready? So get in your comfortable spot, whether it's sitting cross-legged or it's sitting in your chair. We always put our hands on our knees. All right, so you can uh, look down. And if it's okay, if you feel comfortable, close your eyes. All right, so here we go. We're going to inhale and exhale through our nose. And again, I always say it's allergy season, so if you're having issues with your nose, breathe out through your mouth. All right, so here we go. And maybe think while we're doing our breathing, what's something I want to work on this weekend to help improve my patients? Because I promise it's going to make you feel better, and it's going to make the people around you feel better to see that you're really trying to be a more patient person. All right, so here we go. Ready? Listen to my count. Inhale. One, two, three. I'm watching. All right, hold it. And exhale. One, two, three, four. All right, let's do it again. Inhale. One, two, three. Hold it. And exhale slowly. One, two, three, four. We're going to do it one last time. Now, when you inhale, I want you to make sure you really are inhaling the air, okay? Because that helps get that blood flowing in our, in our brains and our bodies, so we're ready to go. So last time, inhale. One, 
Oh, that looks good. Two, three. Hold it. Exhale. One, two, three, four. Very good. If you'll open your eyes. All right, and everybody look up. All right, so we at this point should be ready to learn, ready to go. So the story that I'm going to share today is called Leo the Late Bloomer. So I'm thinking for our younger audience that this is going to, I think you're going to understand this because we're going to talk about it after we read the story, maybe some things that uh, you're impatient with right now because you don't know how to do them. All right, so it says Leo the Late Bloomer. Leo couldn't do anything right. How many of you have ever felt like that? He couldn't read. He couldn't write. He couldn't draw. He was a sloppy eater, and he never said a word. What's the matter with Leo? asked Leo's father. Nothing, said Leo's mother. Leo is just a late bloomer. Better late than never, thought Leo's father. Every day, Leo's father watched him for signs of blooming. And every night, Leo's father watched him for signs of blooming. The snows came. Leo's father, oops, I skipped the page. Are you sure Leo's a bloomer, asked Leo's father. Patience, said Leo's mother. A watch bloomer doesn't bloom. So Leo's father watched television instead of Leo. Do you think Leo was happy that Leo's father quit watching him? Because I remember we talked about how we should watch people's body language in the pages before. Did you notice how sad looking Leo looked? Because he already felt bad. He couldn't do these things. How, how does it make you feel when somebody keeps watching you and you still don't know how to do something? The snows came. Leo's father wasn't watching. But Leo still wasn't blooming. The trees budded. Leo's father wasn't watching. But Leo still wasn't blooming. Boy, a long time's gone around. Winter and uh, then one day, in his own good time, Leo bloomed. Mm. He could read. He could write. He could draw. He ate neatly. He also spoke, and it wasn't just a word, it was a whole sentence. And that sentence was, anybody want to guess what you think that sentence was? What do you think he said? I wonder. Oh, look. I made it. So I end this week with this story, because patience is not just interrupting and not waiting our turn. It's also we have to be patient with ourselves when we're learning new things. So it's okay. Not everybody can do things the same time. So, I, you know, I think about that when we're in school. Like, not everybody learns their multiplication facts the same time. You know, some kids get it right off at the beginning of third grade. Some kids know them by the end of second grade. Some kids, it's the end of third grade. In some kids, it might be beginning of fourth. So everybody learns at different rates. So we have to be patient with those boys and girls who learn differently and, and be patient with ourselves. And, you know, we're our worst critic about that. So think about what are some things that um, you had a hard time doing that you didn't know you couldn't do and you got frustrated because again those emotions are normal it's okay like I remember when I was six years old learning to ride a bike uh, without training wheels I thought there is no way I can do this and it was a big bike because I didn't have a bike I had to ride my brother's bike and I remember being in our front yard and I would fall off and I you're not going to believe what I would do. I'd fall off. I'd skin my knees. And do you think Miss Ross cried? I did. 
But you know what my brother did? He made me get back up on that bike. Can you believe that? I got back on that bike, and I tried again. Guess what? I fell again. But you know what? Glenwood folks know this. Miss Ross is pretty stubborn. I got back up on that bike, and you know what? I learned how to ride that bike, that big bike that wasn't the right size for me, but I learned to ride it, and, and you know what? I love riding bikes now, so it was very fun. What would have happened if just because it was hard, and I really you know, didn't have patience with myself because I got frustrated because I couldn't do it right the first time if I'd given up? I would miss out on the joy of, of riding bikes. So it's even like that. Uh, I remember starting school and uh, reading was hard at first. It was. I had to practice at it. They had to help me with it. But you know what? I love to read. So I'm so grateful that I didn't give up on that. So I kept on learning, practicing my patience with myself. That was okay. I don't have to be good at something the very first time. So it just takes practice. So what I want you to do over the weekend. I want you to think about some things that maybe are hard for you, that really you have your patience level for yourself has not been great. I want you to give yourself some grace. That means go, it's okay. It's okay, I can't do it yet, but I'm going to keep practicing, and I'm going to get better at it. So I want you to think of some things. Because you know what? We have a time right now because everything's still around us. We can't go places. We're supposed to stay in place. That we have time to really grow. So think about something you want to get better at. And practice it get better at it and then you know so that's being patient with ourselves I also want you to be patient with your parents your other family members in your home um, I want you to this weekend it's supposed to be beautiful it's supposed to be pretty warm I want you to get outside maybe learn something new um, and again remember practice patience okay so we're gonna end today with a take five breathing so put your hand up like this. All right. So we're going to make a star with our hand. Let's see if I can do this. All right. We're going to pretend your pointer finger is a pencil. All right. So use your other hand. So I'm going to trace up and down my fingers slowly with this pencil. But really it's just my other pointer finger. All right. Now while I'm doing that, this is called star... Um, was well, called take five breathing, but you could say star breathing. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to breathe in as I go up, and when I go down, I'm going to breathe out. So let's try that because, you know what, everybody has two hands. So, again, get your, and if you're right-handed, like I'm going to switch, uh, hold your left hand up. If you're left-handed, hold your right hand up and use this because that might be easier for you. All right, so you ready? So here we go. I'm going to inhale going up. Exhale going down. You ready? All right, ready? And I'm going to talk you through it. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. So another quick technique to practice breathing. The other thing that I want you to do, I don't want you to sit all day. So before we end, so we've done those calming things, we're going to do something else. You ready? We're going to do a little bit of movement because I think uh, sometimes we, it's, we get okay and think, oh, just laying on the couch is okay. So ready? I want you to take your arms, and I want you to go, whoo. All right, move those arms. All right. So then I want you to wiggle your body like that. Because you got to get your blood flowing. I really want you to get up. Because after I finish this, I'm going to get up and walk my steps for just a little bit. Because then I got to come back and do some more paperwork. So, again, make sure you integrate breathing today. Practice that a little bit. And then you do some movement things. That helps develop patience for you for others. Because if you take care of your body, you do those things, you know what? You can be nicer to other people, and you can have more patience. I've enjoyed being with you this week. I look forward to starting next week with you, and have a great weekend. Again, I can't wait to hear how many bubbles were you able to catch and not pop. So put those in my comment section. Uh, let me know. Practice that this weekend, and then again, practice what's something that you're really not good at, 
that you're impatient about because you're not good at it. But if you practice it, you find that you're getting better and better. Okay? Have a great weekend. Love you guys.